Clara, let me move on then to what that means. This is some MSNBC reporting. I mean, the, the White House has been so focused and, and some activists, our friend Brian Fallon, has even acknowledged looking at the success of Republican administrations in the pace of confirmations for federal judges. The president, this White House has been focused on this since the transition, is my understanding. We reported last spring that Biden's top advisors, including former White House counsel Bob Bauer and White House counsel Dana Remus, made, formal, made a formal presentation to President Biden during the transition about potential candidates for the Supreme Court. It's according to a source who was involved. They see the preparation as important, both given his campaign pledge and also recent history. Two justices retired in President Obama's first two years as president. Trump quickly filled the still vacant seat of Scalia early in his term and then that of Justice Anthony Kennedy a year later. Talk about what's happening behind the scenes. Claire, what are you hearing? Well, first of all, no one knows better what happens in the Senate when there's a Supreme Court vacancy than Joe Biden. Right. He was chairman of the Judiciary Committee for many years. Um, I will tell you this. I've talked to senators today. They are anxious to do this quickly. Uh, there has never been a Supreme Court justice confirmed by a 50-50 Senate before in history. That means every single vote is needed. And, you know, I hate to to even say it out loud while everyone's relieved that Breyer is doing this and everyone is confident a new Supreme Court justice will be confirmed quickly. Um, I don't think it'll take long. Uh, it, there is an issue that we have members that are older. And so you have one health problem. You have one person who is not physically able because of health to be there and the whole thing goes away. So it is really important. And the other thing about this, Nicole, I'll mention, it's, it's a great opportunity to unify the Democratic Party. Yeah. And around whom? I mean, let me let me put up um, some of the lists of, of names that are floating around there. Um, Politico has a list that's as good as any. Um, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson, uh, Leandra Kruger. She serves on the California Supreme Court. Uh, Judge Jackson, obviously, the D.C. Court of Appeals. I believe that's a, a Biden appointment. Uh, Michelle Childs, U.S. District Court in South Carolina. Leslie Abrams Gardner, U.S. District Court serving in Georgia. Sherilyn Eiffel, former NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Are these the names that you're hearing? And um, I think it's, it's, it's fair to acknowledge that one stands a little bit um, higher than the others, and that's Judge Katanji Brown Jackson, Claire. Is that what you're hearing? I am hearing that. Although I will tell you, there's been a growing sense in the Senate, and I have, was somebody who felt this way. There's no reason in the world that every single Supreme Court justice has to graduate from either Yale or Harvard. There's all plenty of really smart lawyers that go to law schools all over this country. And there is something a little weird that our country has decided there's only two schools that produce Supreme Court justices. So I know there are other senators that felt the way I did about that, <laughs> that maybe it might be nice to have a, a Supreme Court justice that wasn't Harvard or Yale. And so I think some of those um, feelings will probably come to the surface as the White House considers who they're going to pick. But all of these women are really qualified. They'll all be great. Whoever Biden selects will get confirmed. OK, we're two for two with confidence of confirmation. So I come to you, Jonathan Lemire, on, on, for the White House's part. I mean, as, as Dahlia pointed out, they're in the bizarre position of being the only confirming, kind of publicly confirming party that's a key player here. Um, Jen Psaki said in her briefing that the president has stated and reiterated his commitment to nominating a black woman to the Supreme Court, and he stands by that. Talk about what the White House is doing today and if they were taken by surprise by our colleague Pete Williams' scoop here. Well, first of all, you were right to bring up the campaign promise that Joe Biden made and did so at an important moment uh, in his 2020 bid for the White House, a low moment. He had lost Iowa and New Hampshire, and it was the urgings of Representative Clyburn uh, did he make that promise, to, to promise to, to nominate an African-American woman to the Supreme Court? He did so in that debate. He stormed a victory in South Carolina a few days later and within a couple of days completed an improbable turnaround and seized control of the Democratic primary process. And then, of course, onto the White House. And the White House has made clear they will honor that commitment. He plans to do it. And Judge Jackson, we just mentioned, is the leader on the most of the boards, the people that I've talked to so far. The White House actually was not taken by surprise today. We've got reporting in Politico that the president was 
was given a heads up uh, by the justice, by Justice Breyer last week, was told, though, the official letter concerning his retirement would still be a week or two down the road, where our friend Pete Williams then broke the news uh, that perhaps has accelerated that timetable. So the letter has not been delivered to the White House yet, but it certainly could be uh, any time. Uh, and there has been some talk of an event in the coming days that would announce the justice retirement, though that's not on the books just yet. But this is something the White House has been ready for. They've been preparing and they're ready to seize. They believe they've heard this from Senator Schumer. They think this can get done uh, in the next couple of months. They think this will be a speedy process and one that comes at a good time for the president, who's looking to reverse, you know, it's sort of a negative slide here, a couple of months of bad headlines. And it's a chance to sort of regain his footing, rally Democrats around this cause. Uh, and it should be noted. As a final point now, Senator Manchin and Cinema, though they've been thorns in the president's side in terms of his legislative agenda, to this point, they've been voting for his judges. And, and, and Joe Manchin has always voted for Democratic judges. So they're hopeful this will get done. Uh, Jonathan, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but if you know, do you know if any Republicans voted for um, Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson um, when, when this White House put her up for her current post? Nicole, I don't have that in front of me. We can aim to research it during the commercial. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I apologize are, you, in advance. You know, yeah. this is, no, that's quite all right. The, uh, I should have had it. The, uh, yeah, certainly, certainly Republicans have not had much uh, willingness to go along with this president's picks. But some of his nominations, yes, of course, they have received uh, some support. Um, you know, Senator, there's been some chatter already today that Senator Murkowski, for instance, uh, has said that she would do so. Susan Collins, Senator from Maine, had an event a short time ago saying that she, of course, would be willing to, 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 uh, to consider whoever the president's nominee would be uh, and, and give it her, a, the, he, her a fair uh, hearing and certainly could support it if qualified. So there is a possibility here. The White House is hopeful that a couple of Republicans uh, could come along. Uh, for the nine. They don't need any, as long as they keep all 50 Democrats uh, in line with the vice president breaking the tie. Okay, so we have uh, all the brilliant minds in the control room tell me that three Republicans did vote for her. I, I want to play some of, uh, for people that, that don't watch this as, as closely as, as all of us do, I want to play some of uh, Judge uh, Ketanji Brown Jackson um, during her Judiciary Committee hearing. I've been a federal judge for eight years. And I have a duty of independence. I clerked for three federal judges before I became a judge, and they were models of judicial independence. And what that has meant is that I know very well what my obligations are, what my duties are, not to rule with partisan advantage in mind, not to tailor or craft my decisions in order to try to gain influence or do anything of the sort. So, Dahlia, after that testimony, she did earn the support or the votes of um, Senators Collins, Murkowski, and one Lindsey Graham, who today said, um, who's on judiciary still, said that um, as to Breyer's replacement, if all Democrats hang together, which I expect they will, they have the power to replace Justice Breyer in 2022 without one Republican vote in support. Elections have consequences, and that is most evident when it comes to fulfilling vacancies on the Supreme Court. Is it, is it your sense from sort of knowing this body and, and knowing what, what is so stunning, which are all these sort of public facing notes of anxiety and angst from the chief justice and from others about this political lens through which 60 percent of Americans view the court. Is it your sense that this court would benefit from someone who garners some bipartisan support? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, um, Judge uh, 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 Brown Jackson clerked for Justice Breyer. And some of that language you just heard there, that language of judicial independence and integrity and the need to triangulate against the law, that's all classic Breyer. And in a sense, that is really the thing that not only is the court hungering for, that the public could come back to that view of uh, the Supreme Court. It's the thing that the public is desperate for. You noted uh, at the beginning the tanking ratings. 
And so I think there's a real allure to having somebody who not only can sort of speak those values in a clarion way, the way we just heard, but in, who really hasn't violated that. I mean, they didn't lay a glove on her during her confirmation mm-hmm. hearings because she's kind of values. And so I think there is a real interest in an easy lift, somebody who was just recently confirmed and who sounds those notes when we need it the most.